Broadcasting live from Youngville, North Carolina and Ontario, Canada, this is Got Mead Live, a weekly show where Vicki Rowe and A.J. Aramitz bring you the mead news, meadery info, and mead-making discussions from all over, talking with mead makers, mead owners, industry mavens, and influencers. This is Got Mead Live, a weekly podcast about mead and the people who love it and where the mead world is going. And now here are your hosts, Got Mead owner, Vicki Rowe, and mead and wine maker, A.J. Airmans. Live from the den of the puppies of the apocalypse, Melbourne Down Under and the bunny pen in Ottawa, Canada, it's Got Mead Live. Welcome to the show. We're doing a shout out today to our buddy Ryan. He's flat on his back and hurting from having a blood clot in his leg. So please send him your best wishes. We sure are. And a huge woohoo to Manny, who just landed a new producer's job on a show on his network. So he's working late tonight doing preliminary stuff for that job. Don't read that next bit. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, just a, a reminder that we all do this on our own time for free because we're all awesome and stuff. But the software, hardware, and storage all cost money. So we hope you'll consider becoming a supporting patron member. It's just $30 a year. You get access to much more on gotme.com as well as the patrons area on Facebook group. At only a little over 50 cents a week. Uh, oh, dear, I've skipped. Yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> at, at only... At only a little over 50 cents a week, it gets you access to the patrons board on the Got Mead forum and the patron Facebook group and all the award-winning recipes contained within those areas. And you can listen to us live on the Got Mead website or if you're mobile or want to listen later, check us out on iTunes, SoundCloud or TuneIn Radio at TuneIn.com. Search for Got Mead Live. Replays back to the beginning of the show are available on GotMead.com, Spreaker.com, SoundCloud, iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Just search Got Mead Live. You can find us at Facebook, facebook.com slash gotmead and facebook.com slash group slash gotmead. You can find us on Twitter at gotmead now. If you can't follow us, tweet us. Uh, you can check our links on gotmead.com and you can call us at 803-443-MEAD. So what are we drinking, Vicki? Aha! I'm finishing off that uh, bottle of San Francisco Meadery's apple pie mead from last week. And, you know, it's funny, sitting open and, well, corked, but, you know, half empty in the fridge for a week. And it actually has kind of mellowed and changed, So and, and not in a bad way. So I like it. It's more, um, it's more, oh, shoot, it's more caramely. Yeah, because the, cause the apple flavor is kind of going to that sort of caramel note that it gets as it ages so yeah i, I kind of like it it's it's an interesting change what about you i'm just on a uh, a latte at the moment so again i am in a factory today i'm really hoping that work's going to let up enough that i can sit home in my luxurious office and run this show with a glass of mead in the very near future <laughs> jo- joe says we have to fire you <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 he's getting his first warning. It's all good. Yeah. We, we, we could, we could suggest perhaps firing the scriptwriter. Yeah, yeah. Well, I gotta, I gotta sit down and completely. Re- I oh. gotta sit down and completely redo these pages. So, um, <laughs> just a matter of finding the time. All right, AJ, what about you? I am finally off the fucking anti-inflammatories. I have got. A very small amount of what was left in the bottle of uh, Joe's Ancient Orange made with golden honey from the apiary I go to. And uh, I don't even remember when this was bottled, but since I've been dry since November, it's been sitting around in a bottle since at least that long with like half a cup. And um, I had a sip and God, did I miss mead. Oh, the spices God. are coming out. The honey's expressing well and I, I miss mead. Boy, did I miss mead. <laughs> Yeah, I can imagine. All right, we're going to go ahead and uh, roll one of our PSAs here. So, uh, Oh, and by the way, uh, Jaden says, uh, hashtag drop bear repellent. And Hamish will understand what that's all about. Yeah. 
<laughs> okay, so um, you want to have your mead judged at the Super Bowl of mead competitions? Well, you're in luck. If you weren't fast enough during the three and a half hours that the uh, Major Cup home competition filled up in when they opened up the doors <laughs> uh, earlier this month, um, they are going to be opening an additional. I got in. Yeah, they're going to be opening an additional 200 entries for the home competition on February 10th. And there's uh, still 50 entries open for commercial, and they're going fast. So if you're a commercial and haven't gotten your entries in yet, get your ass in gear. It's time. Uh, go ahead and do it. Uh, www.mazercup.org. I'm going to be sitting there with my finger on the keyboard when the home comes open. I might get lucky and get my meat in there. So uh, <laughs> we shall see what happens, you know. If I, if I deem this, like, even some way drinkable, then it'll I'll put it in and see what people have to say. Excellent. Yeah. You're getting uh, good wishes on the sciatica sucks and feel better stuff from the guys. <laughs> I see. Thanks, Jaden. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Okay. So our guest tonight is Diane Courier. She's the owner of Honey Girl Mead in Durham. And uh, that's like 45 minutes from me. I actually went to their Christmas party. She makes a pretty nice mead. And I... Um, have had you know the opportunity to have her stuff a couple of times she's been making uh more and different stuff and she's doing really well however she's also speaking at the mma conference and she's doing a talk called solopreneur going it alone it's basically she started a meter and a shoestring and she's making it happen so um she's going to give a talk on that at the conference and she's coming in tonight to uh you know answer questions about that and just talk about her meads and meat in general as well so uh we're hoping to have some good stuff for her. be sure to push in your questions and uh, we'll make sure that they get answered we've already gotten a few uh come in through twitter and uh facebook so you know feel free to get your questions in especially if you're thinking about starting up or um you know it's something that you're in the process of this is this is a process that i think will be helpful for you so, of course, she's not going to give away all her secrets. That you have to come to the conference to see. But uh, we're going to get some good stuff tonight in any case. So it should be cool. And I should probably go ahead and bring her in. Get her in here. So, um, Hamish, what are you making mead-wise that you didn't enter in the competition that you can't tell us about because I'm judging? <laughs> Oh, uh, um, um, unless I happen to um, enter it in, in these next 200, which, of course, you no, won't know. No, you so can't. Like you allowed. can't. Anybody who's already entered is banned from the extra 200. Nice so. work, because I didn't really want to have to do yeah. that. So, good. Yeah. I've got an excuse to not enter in more than my two. That's Great. right. I I actually have a uh, an espresso uh, brew on at the moment. Nice. That... Um, may or may not be any good. If it is, I will be bringing it along. Um, and there's another traditional. It's an OB traditional. I've never never done an, a, an Orange Blossom before, so I thought I'll make a, a, an Orange Blossom traditional. And uh, another just um, chai spice mead. So I'll bring that one along for you as Ooh, well. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just spice Orange Blossom, so it's nice. nothing really fancy, but fancy enough. No, it doesn't have to be fancy. It just has to be good. <laughs> <laughs> That's all that matters. All right, we're going to go ahead, and I got the call going out to Diane here. I hate the new Skype version. You can't see that they're trying to call it, and you don't know if it's working until they come in. Mm. It's like, what? I've also got a, um, also got a five-year-old um, <laughs> strawberry I'll be bringing along Hi, to Diane. share with people. So, um... Hey, Becky. Hey, uh, we're just talking about the meads we've got uh, that we're working on. So I, what was it? Strawberry what, Hamish? Just a, just a plain strawberry. So it's, oh, okay. a, it's actually Yo's, Yo's recipe, but a bit, um, mm. bit, bit drier. Okay. So. I keep meaning to make that recipe, and then I always end up doing something different. <laughs> <laughs> I've twice tried it to make... It sounds amazing. Yeah. Oh, he was talking mm-hmm. about, before we got you on here, he's making an espresso one, and um, that sounds really interesting. I don't like coffee, but several of the coffee meads that I've had have been excellent. I really liked them. Yeah, it, it, it the, the coffee meads I've had, um, and I'm I'm worried that I won't be able to make it the way I like. It, the, they've been a little uninspiring for my taste in coffee, so I'm I'm trying to do something different, something right out of left field, and give it more to the way to to my taste there, so it doesn't taste like a black coffee with, um, with a kind of weird sugar, which is, is the way they come across normally. So I'm 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 thinking I might even. Um, 
uh, try a, a secondary souring on it. Oh, that might be interesting. Hmm. So, uh, okay, welcome. Say everybody, everybody, uh, big old got mead hello to uh, Diane Courier. She's on with us from uh, Honey Girl Mead in Durham, 45 minutes away. And uh, Diane. <laughs> hey, so we got AJ and uh, Hamish on the line, Diane. Hey. G'day. Oh, wait, I'm having a little problem with my uh, headset. Oh, okay. I wonder what happened to you. It's like, did we lose it? <laughs> <laughs> Diane, hello. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. Hold on. Yeah. We usually don't leave people quite this early in the proceedings. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I finally got the buckets. Okay, the... I'm, I'm back. She's back. Okay, good. Al says hi. Jaden says hi. Uh, <laughs> all the people on the Got Me chat. So uh, we have a live Skype chat that goes on during the show. Fantastic. Well, yeah. again, thank you so much for having me on. Oh, no, I'm glad to have you on. It's, you know, you got a cool talk coming up and I haven't had you on yet to, you know, tell a little bit about who you who you are, where you are, and what you're up to. So, yeah, it was funny reading through your bio and I saw your first mead was a ring of fire. Really? You know it. Uh, um, they made good mead. I'm sorry they closed, man. Oh, well, <laughs> the industry's changing so quickly, and there's so many exciting new entries coming on board. Yeah, yeah, that's do very... Do I still have you? Yeah, Am you I... do. Can you hear us? Okay. Yeah. yeah, my headphones were keep going in and out, so I'm just relying on the good old hold the phone in your ear. <laughs> <laughs> Darn. <laughs> I hate when that happens. <laughs> so, um... Tell us a little bit of background on you. I mean, we've got your bio and everything, but just to let the folks out there know, uh, tell us a little bit about, you know, how you found me and, and that kind of thing. Absolutely, because um, it's a big part of what um, I'm about with Honey Girl Meadery and what I'm trying to do now are tied to the roots of my introduction uh, to mead. And I started as a home brewer, like so many others, uh, in – the early 1990s, when I first moved to Durham from New York City, I wanted a way to make new friends in my new town. And as probably a lot of y'all know, um, brewing any kind of alcohol will really magnetize a great group of people to you. <laughs> and so I met a lot of friends that way and um, was really my social outlet. Getting together with these friends at my house, making beers, recipes I found online, and in uh, 2004, my introduction to mead happened in Homer, Alaska, uh, in the summer when there's 24 hours of daylight and bright blue skies and big, big nature. And we were out in that nature a lot. One of the days we were hiking above Homer, above the spit, um, through fields of an Alaskan wildflower called fireweed. Uh, it's about as tall as me, I'm about five two, um, covered in bright pink flowers under this blue sky. So it was really striking in and of itself. And that afternoon, my sister said, uh, we're, we need to stop by this meadery on our way to that party tonight. And um, so she took me to Ring of Fire meadery. And walking in, they said, would you like to try our fireweed mead? And it was the first time I have trying mead. And I was really like wow, I, I was just in that field, and I'm now drinking it. And uh, it was very, very powerful. Um, I'd never really had anything like it in terms of all that floral um, uh, just essence and all the wonderful things that happen when fermenting honey and flower visits and bee visits to, to flowers. So I came home from that trip in 2004, said to my bud, we're not going to brew beer anymore, y'all. Uh, we're just going to make mead from now on. <laughs> I was that hooked already. And uh, then just began a big exploration of making mead over and over with these friends in my home. Each year making a blueberry mead and tweaking 